Hi guys, welcome welcome back to the channel. Hope your day's been good, but better watch this video. So guys, we're again doing A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, but this time we're doing chapter two, The Mail. Last time we did chapter one, and before we get into chapter two, we're gonna have a recap of chapter one. So basically what happened was uh, Charles Dickens described the situation and environment in France and England. These are the two main places where the story is gonna take place, and book one is all about these two places within these two places basically so in france what uh, basically was going on that their laws were brutal like not laws were brutal but like their punishments for breaking that law were brutal and this was their way of discouraging crime and over here in england what was happening was there were laws but no one enforced them on the people and people who were well educated or from good families would turn into the worst crooks at night and nobody trusted anybody else, not even your own neighbor. Like, for you, if you guys are, like, if you guys are living in a colony, you're going to trust your neighbors. But over there in England, you couldn't even trust your own neighbors. You suspected everyone of stealing from you. So this was the situation in both these uh, countries. And overhand in England, the king and queen were least bothered with the people and their uh, and the country's affairs. And both on both places, they were only focused on filling up their own pockets. Now, this was the recap of chapter one. Let's head on to chapter two's summary. Chapter two takes place in a mail carriage heading from London to Dover with several passengers. Everyone suspects everyone else of being a thief. It's an E, not an A. Anyways, so basically uh, our story sets in, in chapter two like by telling us that there are several passengers in a mail carriage. As you can see here, this is a mail carriage. The design may differ, but this is the best I got. So there were several passengers seated in this mail carriage and they were heading from London to Dover. And Dover is in France, if I'm not wrong, because uh, in the first book, it's between uh, England and France, England and France. So you get the point. Everyone suspects everyone else of being a thief. That is pretty, pretty much obvious. They're coming from London. What do you expect? Yeah. Anyways, the coach and the guard hear a horse galloping towards them. The guard gets ready to blow his head off, which means shoot him in the head. But stops, because the horseman is a messenger from Telson's bank. He asks for Mr. Jar Jarvis Lorry and hands him the note. Mr. Lorry is a banker, and the messenger is Jerry Cruncher. So both of these two fine gentlemen work at Telson's bank. And you could say Mr. Jarvis is kind of like a main character in book one. And Jerry Cruncher is just a side character that is just here to pass the note. And we're going to learn about the note in the next slide. But for now, just keep this in mind that both of them worked at Telson's Bank. And Jerry Cruncher, uh, what basically was his side of the story was he worked at a lower post than, of course, Mr. Jarvis Lorry, because as you can see, he's being a messenger here. And other than that, I'll just give you some background information. So I don't know how much of it is correct because we don't know much about Jerry Cruncher. But Jerry Cruncher is like in his he's a middle aged man. And he is married and has a son. Well, Mr. Jarvis Laurie is a 60-year-old man who isn't married. And what else could be there? And is a banker. That's all we got on him. Up till now. Moving on. The note says, wait at Dover for Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle is basically, in, Fran in French, you basically call Mademoiselle. Okay, translation to English is going to be Miss. A young, lady's, young lady who is unmarried. Mr. Laurie replies to the note saying recall to life, which leaves Jerry confused, but he agrees to deliver it. As you can see, he has question marks on his head. Of course, he wasn't wearing a helmet at that time, but this is the best I got. Anyways, so basically, Mr. Laurie gets a message from a lady, a young lady, that wait for, wait for me at Dover. And Mr. Jarvis basically replies to that note saying recall to life. And... All of a sudden, Jerry's confused uh, by his answer, but he agrees to deliver it. And going back to Telson's bank, he keeps thinking about this and how he starts to think that maybe Mr. Jarvis was drunk. Moving on. From his, note to, uh, from his reply to the note, we can make out that a client of Lori has gotten out of jail, which introduces the theme of resurrection, which will be seen later in the plots. So, of course, it's not mentioned in Chapter 2 what the note actually meant, but I'm just going to give you a bit of uh, a head story, not backstory, a head story. So basically what happened was um, Mr. Jarvis replied, recall to life because 
one of his clients was just getting out of jail after 18 years and why he said recall to life because in the 18th century you were so securely imprisoned that people described uh, the imprisonment as being buried alive so after being buried alive and because he's coming back again into the real world they're calling it resurrection or being recalled to life like being given a second chance or a second life Basically, that's what resurrection means. So that's why Mr. Jarvis said recall to life. Moving on. Oh, so we aren't moving on. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment. I don't know. I would like to hear guys' opinions and suggestions. Anyways, guys, see you in Chapter 3, which I'll be uploading today. Anyways, bye.